Hello everyone. Welcome and thank you for joining me on House and Home. I have a great lineup for you. Kawatalu Colors share with us their inspiring story as artists. They teach us that painting is an art that should be taught to others. We also show you wonderful crafts to smarten your homes. And we join Brendan Terina who cooks up yet another mouth-watering sweet and sour chicken dish. Hello lovelies, I am Amanda Elaitia. But first, if you are looking for a seaside place to chill, let's head to Will's Picnic and Barbecue Spot and see what he has for us. too busy with school, work, life, and we just forget to have a good time. Hello Algata, I am here at Garagarana Tarama Beach, a perfect picnic spot where you and your family can simply come out, start up a barbecue, enjoy the breathtaking view, of course the fresh air. So a little later on we're gonna take a short tour around the place, but now we'll talk to Willie, the owner of the place, and he'll tell us a bit more about it. My name is Willie. I'm from Pari. Pari is one of the uh, Motuan coastline villages um, inside um, the capital city. And uh, as you can see, we are here at um, Garagorna. Garagorna is a, a place named and situated um, uh, within the Kashmir lands of the Pari people at Tarama. All right, um, if you um, uh, may have seen and heard, this is a venue I personally thought of um, to host a picnic area for simple Papua New Guineans and families to come out here to enjoy the beachfront. The venue, as you can see, um, uh, is just a simple picnic area with standalone barbecue plates and uh, stands I built with um, uh, forms and tables just from the little bits and pieces I do around it. Well, the idea and the thought of um, setting up uh, this um, uh, uh, barbecue and picnic area goes back about um, 10 years. Um, uh, you know, I left um, uh, work um, so many years ago. In actual fact, I left work in 1999. And um, uh, just to stay home and do nothing, um, thought that um, I needed something to um, uh, end something out of nothing. And the land that belongs to the clan and family is where I stay and live, which has all set me to think of an initiative like this. Over time now, I've been helping to bring my families out here to enjoy a simple picnic area. Oh, well, a lot of um, our people, um, especially residents in the city, tend to run away, escape, from the heat of the city, the crowd, um, uh, the crowd in the city, the noise pollution in the city, they escape to come out here to just enjoy the peace and quiet of the beach and also to bring the families out here to enjoy on a privacy level. As you can see, there's a volleyball court set up here, um, mostly at the request of people who come to use the place. Now, families, individual, uh, individual families don't come to um, uh, play, they come to enjoy, but uh, bigger groups who come to hire the full, full area for their outings request for such. And we make it our business to try and provide for them. It is uh, something that's been built to um, uh, end something out of nothing to sustain families. Life is pretty um, difficult these days. And um, the opportunity to have a picnic uh, venue like this bring something for the family. The charges I have here um, range from the number of people that will attend, especially on functions and outings. But the standard rate of 50 kina per vehicle is for individual families who come in to enjoy the day out here. Well, there is only um, uh, two contact numbers that um, uh, people call 
Um, normally a lot of families come out here on a head hoc basis, they don't call. It's a place is um, visible from the main roads out here at um, Tauroma Beach. You can look down and see the venue. But people who know and do inquiries, they call us um, uh, uh, prior to coming down. And um, uh, the contact um, numbers, I would, uh, I would say, um, are mine and my um, good missus. Um, my number would be um, 7266-7319. And my missus number is 7391-5194. We are going to take a short tour around Will's barbecue and picnic spot. So first we are here at the little greenhouse that they have set up. They even have powerpoints as well. So if families come around, you can come sit around here, bring your mats, spread your mats, sit around here, put your food and stuff here. And next we will be heading to the beach. There is always something special about the ocean and its ability to calm the soul. So this is the view you can enjoy once you come out here with your family or your friends. So on that side you have the Tutu Beach, the famous Tutu Beach. It's quite windy today, well not really, but it's quite windy today so I'm actually really enjoying the breeze. Behind me is the Pyramid Point. These are some of the places that you will see once you come out to um, Will's Barbecue and Picnic Spot. I had the opportunity to visit Will's Barbecue and Picnic Spot. It has a scenic view and is located on the beach. The wind in my hair and sand between my toes. It was an amazing experience away from the city life. I plan on visiting this place again and highly recommend this place if you just want to get out of the city with your family during the weekends to have a little barbecue and simply enjoy the sea breeze. Don't forget to contact Willie on the contact details that he gave if you need to place inquiries. We will be back with more after these short messages. Welcome back everyone. Now empty toilet paper holders seem like they have no use at home. Let's see what we can make out of them. Welcome everyone. Many times we use a toilet paper and we throw away the empty toilet rolls. Today I will be showing you how to put that to good use. So we're gonna be making um, a pen holder out of the toilet rolls. So for this we'll need materials like colored paper, gift wrapper, make sure it's a paper wrapper, a biro and a scissors. If you have a glue gun you can use that but if not then you can use a super glue, glue stick for um, all purpose glue stick, cotton string, of course the empty toilet rolls and cardboard. Oh, and not forgetting the plastic plates. Oh, I have some shelves here as well. I will be using them to decorate the pen holder. But if you have stickers, you can always use that. So first, we are going to be gluing the gift wrapper. We're gonna be cutting it and gluing it around the toilet roll. I'm just gonna cut up the paper a little, a little, a little, and glue it. Make sure it sticks. I'm just gonna glue the 
a toilet roll to yeah, just like what I'm doing, you just glue the inside of it. And then yeah, the parts that you've cut out, you're gonna glue them in. Okay, do the same for the other side. And then again, you just, you're just going to glue it to them. Reason for toilet rolls, so we're gonna do the same for the other three. That's all for toilet rolls done. Now we'll move on to the colored paper. Just like what we did with the wrapper this time, the colored paper goes into the toilet rolls. So I'll do a, an example and you can see. Just our colored paper is big, so we're just going to half it and cut in the middle. Cut in the middle, yes. So just put a bit of glue on the wrapper because you'll roll your colored paper and then put it into the toilet roll. And then you just roll up, um, roll your colored paper and you, you're gonna put it in. Yeah. Okay, now we're gonna be gluing the toilet rolls together. So you just put some glue on the wrappers. There you have it everyone, it is as simple as that. Now start making use of those empty toilet paper holders at home. You're watching House and Home, don't go away. For viewers that have just joined us, welcome. You're watching House and Home. I now show you how to change your LED notification colors on your phones. Some smartphone models from Nexus, LG, Sony and Samsung phones can change the color of the LED lights with a few tweaks. How to do that? Step 1. Open your settings menu from any location you want. How you get that doesn't matter. Step two, find sound and notification. Depending on the model and version of Android you're using, this will be slightly different. Step three, pulse notification settings. Once again, this differs from version to version. Under sound and notification, look for any settings relating to pulse notifications. You'll either see a toggle switch or need to access a new menu for the setting. 
either way, enable pulse notifications from here to enable your LED notification lights. The best Android apps for changing your LED notification light. Now that you know how to turn on your LED notification light if it wasn't ready, it's time to download an app that will help you finally change that color from white to something else. To get that done, I have two different apps for two different Android users. App 1, Light Manager. Up front, Light Manager requires root access if you are an Android device running Android 4.2 and below. If you're on 4.3 and higher, no root is required. Light Manager's capability is hard to pin down. So you'll need to try the app before you know if it will work for your Android device. App 2, Lightflow. Lightflow is an app that's highly rated and well received by most users but has the same compatibility issues that Line Manager has. If you can get it to work after downloading, you're golden. But if you cannot, then you can't do anything about it. Hope that gives you an insight as to how you can change your LED notification colors. I'll be back with more after these short messages. Welcome back. Let's head to the kitchen and cook up something delicious with Brandon. Hello Ogeta, my name is Brendan. Today we'll be cooking for you a sweet and sour chicken. As you can see our ingredients are lined up here for you. I'll just go through, go through them with you. So first off, our main ingredient, we have the chicken breast, all diced up. Um, we have our capsicum here, all diced up, assorted colors. We have our oil, our pepper. We have our main element of the dish, which is um, apple juice, orange juice, pineapple fruit, and lastly, not forgetting our cornstarch. Okay, without any further ado, we we'll go straight into our cooking. So first off, I have my cornstarch here. I will coat um, my chicken, chicken breast, diced chicken breast, and then deep fry them. So what I'm gonna do is pour all the cornstarch in, like so. So what you, do, what you want to do is get all your chicken, diced chicken all um, caught up in the, the cornstarch, like, I guess as you can see, they're all covered up. Make sure it's not moist, but just dry, nicely dry like this. So once that's done, what you want to do is get a pan, put oil, and we'll be deep frying our chicken. So here we have our pan. At medium heat. Add in your oil. Like so. So you'd want your pot to be um, boiled to the point where you see the oil bubbling or you'll see small waves underneath the, the pot where then you know that the oil is ready. So once, that, once you see that, then it's all, all good for your chicken to go in. So for my recipe today, the sweet and sour chicken, the vegetables, the fruits, the juice, all added up to a cost of 30 to 35 kina. Um, Budget-wise, it's enough for you to get for the family. Um, Again, you don't need much. You just need um, just 30 to 35 kina. Go to the market, go to the shops, get yourself chicken breast, your veggies, and you'll have a wonderful dish for the night or the day. So right now we're waiting for our oil to heat up. So it's just about ready. So we'll just add in our chicken. As you can see, it's coated. So we'll put it in and then start getting um, 
onto the frame. So, when frying with cornstarch, what you want to do is not let the chicken uh, fill the pot up with chicken. Because again, it's cornstarch. And when cornstarch gets in contact with moisture, hot moisture, it gets sticky and they get stuck. So just gradually add one by one and then slowly remove them. But the consistency you want is a golden, golden brown consistency. The texture. So as you can see, they're slowly turning golden brown. So you must always have a pan at the side ready for you to bring out your uh, chicken when they are fried. We're gonna put them, let them cool. Then you jump on to the next thing, the other thing. So sweet and sour sauce is a nice savory dish. Um, it has the sweetness and the sourness from the pineapples. You, uh, it's filled with flavor, um, a lot of good minerals in the fruits and the vegetables that you have. And plus the chicken, good protein for fiber, which is good for your health too as well. Lean beef. So our sweet and sour is just about turning golden brown, as you can see. So what you want to do is get them really golden brown. Gives the good color and the color to the sauce, the sweet and sour sauce when you make one. So what you want to do is get your chicken golden brown so you can add it into your sweet and sour sauce, which I will be making later for you to see. So as, as you can see, they're nicely crisp and golden brown. So we'll get some out and add the others. Nice. Look at the color. It's just nice. Well, the first part of our cooking has been done. We have all our diced chicken that are all crispy and golden brown as you can see. So we'll just get them out and then continue with doing the sauce. Nice. Now you want this beautiful color of your chicken. Good crispy, nice golden brown fried chicken. So now for our sauce, what we'll be needing is orange juice, apple juice, Pineapples. And for the filling, we have capsicum. And for flavor, we have salt and pepper. So, without further ado, let's get on to doing our sauce. So, here I have my saucepan. Now, what I'm going to do is first saute my capsicums and my pineapples. So without oil, don't use oil. Just use the natural flavors from the juice. It will make a good savory taste in it. So I'll put the heat. In goes your pineapples, then your capsicum. So as you can see, the heat is picking up and you'll, you'll slowly see that the, it will start sizzling and crackling inside. That's when you know that um, the juice is being um, caramelized with all the with the veggies that we have in here. So, using our salt, uh, pepper, and our salt, we'll just add in to add flavor. So, a little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper. Now, when you hear that, it's time to just rapidly stir. So what you want to find here is um, the edges of your capsicum and your pineapple must turn brown. That's when you know that it's okay. It's, I mean, it's good. It's ready now to put aside and then add in your juice. So 
So after seven minutes of high heat, intense heat cooking, we have now the edges of our pineapple and our capsicum all just um, brown, golden brown, which is good. So now what we're gonna do is add in our juice. So while the juice is in, I have prepared a um, cornstarch mixture with water, the leftover cornstarch that we have to thicken and um, make the cornstarch more consistent and give it good um, color and um, feel of it. So I'm gonna bring this down to a low heat. And what I'm gonna do now is add in my juices. So first with the orange juice. Then our apple juice. Then we stir. We're letting it simmer. We stir and let the, the pineapple and the, the capsicum all mix, mix the flavor up with the juices. And as it boils, it gives that nice, um, nice, nice texture to it, nice, nice taste to it. So right now we'll let the sauce cook through for a minute or two. Let all the juices mix together and then after that we'll start adding our cornstarch and our chicken to the flavor. Um, for our recipe, the plating will have steamed rice and veggies. That's how we're gonna present it to you. So we prepared some earlier on, so we'll wait for the plating. So now that our um, sauce has been cooking very well, we'll just add in our cornstarch, as you can see, into the mix. So while that's in, what we're gonna do now is just stir slowly and never, never stop stirring when you add cornstarch because you don't want the cornstarch to reach the bottom. You keep it in a motional con uh, movement so you don't, the cornstarch doesn't thicken inside or don't get stuck to the bottom of the pan and you'll have a really good sauce. So what we're doing right now is let it simmer. So as it's simmering, it's reducing, so water is reducing, and as you can see, it will start to get thick. So we'll just give that about, say, two, three minutes, depending on the type of heat that you're using. So it's slowly, as you can see, gradually we're getting the consistency that we want. Nice. The flavor, smell, all nice. So we'll also season this with a, a little bit of pepper and again salt. So first in with our salt, then our pepper. So we'll let this simmer for a minute or two to get the right consistency. Then we'll add in our chicken, then we'll start plating. So everyone, after seven minutes, our sauce is ready. Now we'll just add in our chicken and it's time to plate. So as you can see, nice consistency again. Now let's add in our chicken breast. Like so. Just toss it around in there. As you can see, the color is coming out just, just fine, just nice. So you wanna coat all your chicken in um, the sauce, or the sauce you want. Just coat them so it gives that nice flavor with the, the fried um, chicken, deep fried chicken. So that's, that's about it, it's ready now. So we'll start plating. So here we have rice that I prepared earlier. So you can see um, I have my salad here for my side. Um, side dressing. Um, right now I'm going to just cut my garnish, put my salad, then we'll plate our main recipe on top. So not to be too creative, this is what you want to do. Just place your lettuce in a nice orderly form where you see you want to eat. You know, presentation is the best. So here we have our cherry tomatoes. Just slice in half. Nice. So, I'll reach. 
cherry tomatoes. Now we have our spring onions. So what I'm do, gonna do with my spring onion is, I'm gonna cut them slanted, like this. So, the first one's gonna go up here. As you can see, and then the rest follows. Should be about enough. So now for our sweet and sour chicken to go on top of our rice and our salad. Nice. Let's add up a little bit of color. Some more chicken. Lastly, our garnish. So everyone, as you can see, this is our sweet and sour chicken. I hope you enjoyed cooking with us and we'll see you some other time. Delicious. That pineapple really added flavor to the chicken. Don't change channels. You're watching House and Home. Welcome back, I am Amanda Elaitia. Let's now head out and see what wonderful crafts we can use to smarten our homes. Want to add something extra to your homes? Or if you generally want to have that homely atmosphere, I suggest you get PNG artifacts to enhance your homes. Hi there lovelies, I am here with someone who can provide just what you need to switch up your homes. Equipped with so many skills, carving is one of the many essential skills that has been passed down from one generation to the next. Vavina Pona is one of those who has learned this skill from his father and is further venturing into carving a variety of crafts like bowls, dolphins, cups, chopping boards, tables, and even 21st keys upon orders. Many of these crafts would look lovely in any Papua New Guinean home. Vavina says he is open to carving anything, depending on customer orders. As a father, this is what he does to support his family. Hello, please tell us your name and where you are from. Uh, my name is Vavine Pona. I'm from Karawa Village and I'm the owner of Charisma Craft. Who did you learn how to carve from? Did you learn it from someone or did you teach yourself how to carve? Uh, I learned it from my father and grandfather. And some, uh, I learned it from myself. When you started carving, what did you carve first? Uh, kundu, kundu drum. From there, and I learn how to carve many more coffee tables or uh, anything from wood. So, what crafts do you carve? Kundu drums and baldies with the lid and coffee table and many more. Okay, so if people were to buy these crafts, what would they use them for? They will use them for their living room or kitchen or, or like feast or celebrations like that, they can use them. Tell us a bit about the different crafts that you make. Tell us about the kundu or flower vase, the tables that you have, the bowls. For each of them, what can people use them for? Uh, Kundu is, you can uh, use it for traditional dances or cultural and ukulele for like going to church for your 
any ministry or like that or party or many more. And a flower vase is for your own decoration. You can put flower in it. And coffee table, it's for your coffee or drinks or for your own decoration. And uh, baldies, uh, that's like tetol, it got a lid. You can put a tetol recipe or crepe too, crepe or many more. I used to cover them with the lid so you can crepe or consel or tetol. Yeah, you can put fruits or food in, in it then. You can put the cover on. You have little bowls. What can um, people use this for? Uh, for dressing your table or for putting your uh, earrings or like lipstick or many more. Seems like you cover a lot of crafts. Can you tell us how long it takes you to carve them? Uh, Kundu is one day, and coffee table is two days. I like baldies, uh, yeah, two days, and ukulele one day, and some some more. You can see them at Charisma Craft Page. Okay, so you mentioned Charisma Craft Page. Um, when people want to find you. Where can they find you? How can they contact you? You uh, can find me at uh, uh, Facebook on my Charisma Craft. I got a page there. And you can find my number on that page. And my number is 7242-5322. Okay, thank you so much for your time, Mr. Pona. Uh, thank you. If you need decorative ideas, don't forget that you can reach Charisma Crafts on their Facebook page. Don't go away, I will be back with an interesting story for you. Welcome back, you're watching House and Home. Kawata Lokalas is owned by a family of artists who just happen to be my one talks from Millen Bay province. This is their story. Hi, my name is Noah Kawatalu. My art name is Geno Sam. I'm from Robben Island. I uh, started painting when I was a child, but signing my own name started back in 2018. It's a living and it's the only way, a source of income. Uh, the inspiration or the push, why I came out to sign in my own name was because well, back in 2018, I, I had my first child here. Yeah. My first born girl, so I had to start painting to earn my own self a living here. Yeah. Apart from myself, I have my um, dad, Kalakawa Talu, my brother also, um, Nathan Kawatalu and plus some other boys that we paint along together. So mainly youth, uh, youth, youths from the street. Uh, we've been together, grew up together. So we just introduce art to them. So we specifically, uh, my dad specifically paints on um, Troban Island uh, legends and stories about. And then my small brothers and other boys, uh, they do designs and all that. And, uh, my youngest brother, he does finger painting. Uh, apart from painting, we do any form of art. Uh, we do wood carving also. Uh, my dad is into a lot of weird art. He starts, uh, he comes up with a lot of ideas or 
new techniques and all that we create. So we've been doing almost every form of art since childhood. Now we screen printed also. Uh, we print for um, SMEs, so we do printing for uh, themes around Mosby. And then just recently we've done up, um, uh, we worked a collaboration with um, DMS. We did um, uh, Bed of Paradise screen printing. It's based on take, taking back our identity. Uh, growing up, the main focus of my dad is teaching anyone that he comes across. Whatever he has, he shares his ideas. He doesn't keep it. He's not, he's someone where he likes sharing his knowledge. So from that, we learned a lot of how he does things. And then when we grow up around him, we started liking what uh, we focused on helping others also. So most of uh, what we do, any person that we come across mostly our, around our community, our street, when they, they've been with us for so long and they, when they're interested in doing that, we introduce art to them. So we just give them canvas and all that and we tell them, just do what you want to do. There's no um, rules or nothing, that restrictions on that. So whatever you want to create, you create on your own. So we give them the opportunity to paint. And then uh, uh, when they started painting, they realized that they can um, paint and they explored something hidden within them. And then the best thing of it, and whenever they sell their first paintings, that's the boost where they tend to paint. And then we just continue working on them. So from there, we just help them and guide them. It's so not more like a training or teaching classes or whatever we do. It's just something we, we sit down, joke around, play around with paint and all that, and we start pushing them to do this, and uh, how about you try this, how about you try that, and then get them to try or, uh, and find the true uh, style of art they're good at. My kids, they've been painting uh, my daughter Samia has been painting with me since she was almost a year. So she, we did our first collaboration, I think, before she turned one. Um, when she turned two, we sold the, uh, our first ever collaboration piece. But apart from that, she does her own artworks. Uh, my son is still new with paintings. He paints, but most of the time he just kind of eats the paint. Yeah, doesn't paint. So we kept him away a bit from paint, but when change given to him, you know, he's also painting with us. Yes, he's um, our, our newest artist we've been working with. Um, he's from Medan. Uh, his, his name is Viani. He's, he's a teacher, but he's so into painting also, so we just brought him in and then we gave him the opportunity. And um, so far he did, I think, seven or uh, five or seven pieces and then he sold this uh, first painting two weeks ago at the Pond City Market. Uh, my name is Vianne Mombi, I'm from Medeng. We just moved in here lately and then uh, I was moving around and then I found Nova with his paintings and it was an uh, interest to me. Like I used to paint with uh, draw with pencils but then I saw the uh, paint and it interested me. And I joined in and asked Noah if I could walk outside with him. I was, I was just at home, just to complete my studies and go into teaching field. But then uh, I was at home for uh, two years now. So I decided to join Noah. I asked him that I could walk outside with him to at least do something while staying home. With the paintings, uh, about the brass, I'm not used to paint with the brass. But as time goes by, it, uh, I was improving on the painting with brass. Uh, when I meet them, it feels, it feels home, like they welcome, they welcome me, I feel welcome home, so it feels home with them. Uh, it was a design, it was a, normally a, a design that, uh, that comes out of my mind. The title was Tumuna Crying about the, the cults are dying out. Like painting alongside with Noah, it feels, uh, it feels good to walk aside with him. And I also thinking of at least do something to improve the, uh, like the SME. At least we combine together and do something bigger, like come up with our own uh, art, or, I mean, like a company or something like that.
Remember everyone, painting is an art that needs to be shared with others. What a wonderful and inspiring story from the Kawatalu family. Anyway everyone, we have now come to the end of this week's edition of House and Home. Don't forget to contact us on the address now showing on your screen. Do not forget to mask up when you leave home, sanitize your hands, and practice social distancing. Join us same time next week. Goodbye.